Alright, so so far this has been pretty easy. It's just a whole bunch of coloring, shading in some above, below parabolas or whatever. So now this is a little bit, just a teensy bit more challenging. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be because we're just on objective 3 solving quadratic inequalities with one variable. So there's no y here, it's just an x. Okay, and so in the picture here, I'm this is one of those instances where you're choosing an AND or an OR operator. So AND, when we're talking about inequalities, is a segment less the AND. And an OR is great OR. And it's the two, two rays going in opposite directions like that. And that's exactly what we're going to have to do, solving quadratic inequalities in one UNO variable. So... Solving quadratic inequalities with one variable is, is the combination of, it's kind of like solving a quadrat, or, or a linear inequality in one variable, so it's graphed on a number line, and it's like solving um, an absolute value inequality where you have ands and ors. So just as a reminder, an and inequality, like we saw in the last one, is a segment. So here's an and inequality, and this might be something like negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. Something like that. An OR inequality has two rays, like so, and a gap in between them. And this one might be x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 2. So this is the kind of thing we're going to have to do when we're solving quadratic inequalities with one variable, with just an x. So. I want you to consider this very, very simple quadratic inequality. x squared is greater than or equal to 25. Okay, if this was an equation, that'd be super simple to solve, but it's now it's an inequality. When it was an equation, what you would do is you'd just take the square root of both sides. However, taking the square root of both sides doesn't make much sense with um, an inequality sign in there. So instead, let's just... Well, let's just ignore the inequality sign. Let's pretend like it's an equation. x squared is equal to 25, and then solve that by taking a square root, and we get how many answers? Two of them. x is equal to positive 5 and negative 5. Now, these are not necessarily our answers. They're what are called the critical values. Okay, so we put those two critical values on a number line. And that's going to break up our a number line into a couple of different intervals. Take a look at that. So here, here's a number line right below it. I'm going to put in negative 5 and 5. For this particular inequality, those two numbers would satisfy it. It's negative 5 squared is 25, and 25 is equal to 25. Same thing with positive 5. So these two points break up the number line into three regions. Okay, so we have everything that's less than negative 5, we have everything that's greater than positive 5, and then we have the stuff in the middle in between negative 5 and positive 5. Your answer is going to be one of these intervals. Okay, it's either going to be the green part in between them, or it's going to be the stuff on the outside, the red and the blue. Okay, so we just have to use a test value to see which ones make sense. Okay, so let's just use a test value. If I were to plug in 0 in here, if I were to plug in 0, I'd have 0 squared is greater than or equal to 25. That's not a true statement, so therefore I can't have the 0 part graphed. That won't, be, that won't make it a true statement. How about something bigger than 5? How about 6? 6 squared is 36. And that is greater than or equal to 25, so that checks out. How about down over here on this side? Negative 6 squared, put that in parentheses, that's still 36, which is greater than or equal to 25. So it's both parts that are on the outside of this, so that's how it's going to look. How do you write that as an inequality? This one is x is less than or equal to negative 5, or x is greater than or equal to positive 5. Notice that the original sign here is a great or than sign, and this is a great or. It is an or inequality. Now this is something that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out about this. You can only use this as a shortcut if your quadratic term is on the left side, if it comes first. Okay. 
If it doesn't, just maybe rearrange your terms. Also, it needs to be a positive one out here first as well. Okay, so let's look at the other case. Let's switch this thing around. Now let's make it x squared is less than or equal to 25. Now whenever I do a test value of 0, if I plug 0 in there, of course, 0 squared is less than or equal to 25, so it checks out. If I plug in the 6, 6 is 36, 6 squared, and of course that's going to be bigger than, and so is it uh, negative 6 squared, 36, lovely squared, yeah, 36. Both of those, uh, of course, do not satisfy it, so this time it's just the green portion in between there. And you write that as negative 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to positive 5. What kind of inequality is that? That's an and inequality. Again, I'll point that out that this is x squared is less and 25. And I can only use this as a shortcut if the squared term is on the left side of the equation, inequality, and it's positive. If it's not, you'll just have to make it that way before you can use this shortcut. Otherwise, you just use a test value, okay? So, here's another way to think of it. Let's relate it back to objective one. Let's put it with two variables instead of one. I know this might sound strange, but watch this play out and you'll see, oh, that's actually pretty cool. So instead of thinking of x squared minus four is less than zero, let's make it x squared minus four is less than y, okay? We're going to graph that parabola and then shade the appropriate region. So think of it like this. And, and whenever I go to graph this thing, it's just the parent function that's moved down four, right? So I'd graph it like so. It is a dashed line. Y is the greater part on this. So if I look at this, Y is greater than all this. What part is going to be shaded? Greater means above the Y stuff, okay? Now, I'm going to collapse this thing down. Where is it only touching the x-axis? Because this is two-dimensional, I don't want all of the y-coordinates. I just want whatever is on the x-axis. So, whatever the shading is, it's on the x-axis. So, it's in between those two points, and it's that segment. And then watch this collapse down. Oh, what good anime. I've got to watch that again. I've got I to gotta watch that again. Fantastic. So what is the answer there? It is uh, negative 2 is less than x is less than 2. Also, if I look back over here, this is a less than and, and it's an and inequality. Let's look at this in the other direction then. Make this x squared minus 4 is greater than y. So go ahead and make the parabola again. Even though this is greater than y, y itself is smaller than the quadratic parts. So this time it's going to be shaded down below, right? And again, the answer is only where the shading touches the x-axis. So the two intersection points, two x-intercepts get open circles like so. And then this time it's going to be two rays that go on the outside. And then get rid of all the other shading. Look at that. Nice. So the answer is negative x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than positive 2. That was pretty sweet, pretty sweet. So let's give this a try, shall we? Solve the inequality. So uh, I got a 4 over here. Let's get that to the other side. 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 is greater than 0. But let's just pretend like it's an equal sign. Um, we could try to factor it. Let's try to factor it so we can get some the, the critical values because that's what we're looking for is we're looking for the critical values. Um, same thing as the, like the x-intercepts. So open my parentheses and I have a 2x and an x. That's the only thing that's going to multiply up to the... 2x. Now I can't use a 2 and a 2 because if I put a 2 in this parentheses, then that means that it would have a common factor of 2 and I could have factored everything out. Uh, a 2 out of everything. So that doesn't make sense. So the only thing that really makes sense here is making a 4 and a 1. I wouldn't put the 4 in this one for the same reason I wouldn't put a 2 because it would have a common factor of 2 and I could have factored it out to begin with. Okay. 
So all that to say that this one has to be a 1 and this one a 4. Um, let's see, we want a negative 7, positive 1. Inside term is an x. Outside term is a negative 8x. That makes 7x, negative 7x, and that checks out. Okay, so our critical values then from the first one, x is equal to negative a half. From the second one, x is equal to 4. And I add it over. All right, let's put these on the number line. All right, I'll we'll see. I got a 0 there. Let's say negative a half is right here. Does it get an open or a closed circle? Let's look back. That says just greater than, so it is open. And uh, my 4 out here, also an open. Now I need to decide, is it going to be shaded on the inside or on the outside? This, the quadratic part is great or... So this should mean that I am shading on the outside of this, out here and out here. Um, if you're not sure, let's just plug in zero and see if that makes sense. I can plug it in in the original one or the one where I got four over, it doesn't matter. Let's just plug it into the original one. So two times zero squared is zero, minus seven times zero is zero is greater than 4. Is 0 greater than 4? It's not. That's why we didn't shade the stuff in the middle. So my final answer then is, let's put this in set builder here, x such that x is less than negative 1 half or x is greater than 4. Uh-huh, set builder. How about interval notation? Just because. Smallest value left to right is negative infinity all the way up to negative a half. Both of these get parentheses because they're not included. Union, parentheses, four, all the way up to infinity. Right, right, right. Guess what time it is? That's right, it's time for you to try it on your own with exercise six. Pause it. Hmm, so maybe this one turned out a little tougher. What do you think? Uh, so, whenever I try to do this, I, I first notice that it's a less than. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Subtracted the 3 over, tried to factor it, but it wouldn't factor. If it's not going to be factorable, then I need to either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. Um, I chose the quadratic formula on this one, so let's look at that side of stuff. So, using the quadratic formula, Reducing everything down, you get negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 7 over 2. And then I just went ahead and approximated those two things with decimals. Put them on a number line, and it's less than, so it has to be in between those two. So, over there on the left-hand side, you have uh, set builder notation. And then on the right-hand side, kind of in the middle, there's the interval notation. And if you didn't like that... A particular kind of test that shortcut you can just use zero plug zero in there zero is less than or equal to three definitely true so it's everything that's in between there